Aaron Ingram to you. He has a really cool talk about um, the role of neurotransmitters and iron deficiency in restless leg syndrome, or RLS. Deverne is from the Bahamas, and he is a chemistry major going to graduate in December. And what he wants to do for his career is really cool and something that some of you might want to consider, which is doing um, jobs related, related to surgical technology. So maybe a cardiac perfusionist or a surgical technician. And if you would like to know more about those high paying, good quality of life jobs, Deverne can tell you about them. They're cool. So Deverne is going to do a great job. He does have an accent, so listen closely. And if you, the, he has more, he is allowed to have more words on the screen um, than usual to help with that. So, just remember in Bahamas, you have an accent. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you have an accent. If you're from here, you have an accent in America. Yeah. Okay, so. Great. is on identifying the impact of select microorganisms in relation to dopamine related disorders. Uh, these are the things I will be talking about. The background, introduction to restless leg syndrome, experimental data, summary, analyzing, identifying microorganisms, and the Okay, uh, background. Um, imbalances too, imbalances with neurotransmitters has been known to correlate and to cause, to cause a correlation with several known diseases. Dopamine, particularly as a, trans, as a neurotransmitter, uh, has showed a strong correlation with uh, Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia, and restless leg syndrome. Uh, it also shows a correlation with iron, which is an important micronutriment to the body. Uh, therefore, from this knowledge, it is, a possible, it is possible to study how micronutriments affect neurotransmitter-related disorders. Okay, um, all right, uh, this is a diagram of the brain showing two different types of neuro neurotransmitted disorders, uh, dopamine and serotonin, but we mainly focus on dopamine. As you can see, the dopamine pathway in yellow is much more concentrated in the frontal cortex. The frontal cortex is responsible for uh, planning appropriate, appropriate behavioral responses to in external and uh, internal stimuli. Uh, the functions of dopamine is reward, is reward pleasure, and also to motor function, which I will, will be la later make in an experiment. All right, um, dopamine levels in a normal person compared to a person with Parkinson's disease. In the brain, in the brain, it sends electrical impulses to and from the neural, I mean, to and from the central nervous system. Uh, which is generally known as neurotransmission or synaptic transmission. From the normal neuron, there's a transfer of dopamine which, 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 between the synapse uh, to the receptors, which results in no, normal movement in, in a normal person, whereas a person with Parkinson's disease has a low count of dopamine, which results in movement disorder. A uh, person with Parkinson's disease uh, it normally shakes. Uh, this is because nerve cells are destroyed in the presynaptic neuron, <coughs> whereas, whereas this causes the loss of dopamine. Without dopamine, the brain cannot send signals. The brain cannot send signals or messages, which cause to a loss in muscle function. Uh, Muscle function, and this area of the brain is the area of the brain is called the thalamus. Um, yeah. 
Okay, um, my study was mainly the ducking on restless leg syndrome. Uh, restless leg syndrome. Restless leg syndrome is characterized as a this, as a sensation of discomfort in the legs. It, is, it can be described as itching, tingling, or painful. Well, restless leg syndrome is a common neurological disorder which, uh, with a prevalency of 2.5 to 15 percent in general population. It normally occurs when a person is stationary, either resting or sitting down, and it only can be, be relieved if a person is moving their legs. Um, yeah. um, also, uh, pe uh, people normally, have, I mean, uh, normally restless leg syndrome happens in the evening, lasting through the night. Uh, people have problems sleeping and falling asleep, uh, which reduces sleep time three to five hours a night. Okay, uh, okay, this diagram shows uh, the neurotransmission in a non patient related <coughs> to a patient with restless leg syndrome. Uh, as you can see in the first diagram, the dopamine count is higher than a, a patient with RLS. Uh, comparing RLS to a person with Parkinson's disease, the, the person with Parkinson's disease, dopamine count is lower than um, the person with restless leg syndrome. That's why in restless leg syndrome, the, the person do not show uh, shakiness as in the person with Parkinson's disease. Uh, in the third diagram, uh, the person is treated with levodopa. Levodopa is a drug that increases dopamine, do, increases dopamine and acts as a precursor. The pre precursor is a compound in a chemical reaction that produces another compound. In the fourth diagram is a patient with RLS treated with dopamine agonis. Dopamine agonis activates dopamine receptors in the absence of dopamine. Okay, uh, correlations with RLS. Uh, in dopamine, the anomalies involved with dopamine and RLS is due to this uh, Dopaminic dysregulation. Dopamine dysregulation occurs when there's a reaction, when there's a, yeah, when there's a reaction and a problem with dopamine receptors. Uh, dopamine also shows uh, significance in sleep deprivation. In mice, uh, dopamine depletion is suppressed by REM sleep. REM sleep is rapid eye movement sleep in a study by Martin et al. And uh, the question may have occurred to you, why the use of iron? Because iron plays a role in RLS, because it's necessary in synthesizing tyrosine hydroxylase, which is a rate limiting enzyme in dopamine production. All right, uh, the creation of tyrosine. <coughs> iron, BH4, and oxygen acts as cofactors <coughs> with neuro one transcription <coughs> uh, which targets genes in combination with the activity of alpha cyanotide which creates tyrosine hydroxylase which then creates dopamine in the presynaptic neuron which then a, a neural transmission occur which transfers to the dopamine receptors in the postsynaptic neuron. All right, uh, in the Darling et al. study they use a combined mouse model with iron deficient mice and D3 receptor deficient mice. The iron deficient mice results in the loss of dopamine. Well, the significance of the D3 receptor in the experiment is that dopamine is needed to, is needed to attach to the D3 receptor in order to inhibit excess movement. Well, if there is no dopamine, there's going to be more unwanted movement. That also goes for if there are less D3 receptors, it's going to cause more movement. Also, in the experiment, there was circadian motor symptoms evaluated by continuous recording and spontaneous, spontaneous real running. Also, there was the testing of acute and persistent pain 
with respect to assess sensory symptoms. In the experiment, there was 30 male homozygous mice, <coughs> which, which was mutant mice, and there was also 30 male wild type mice. Okay, uh, all the mice were housed in separate cages on a 12 hour lightning dark cycle. To test the uh, iron efficiency in the mice, wild type one, the D3R knockout strings had less than 8 milligrams of iron per kilogram of body weight, whereas the, con the controlled mice had was on a, maintained a normal diet of 179 milligrams of iron per body weight. Okay, uh, voluntary real movement. All the mice was all the mice had continuously and individually <coughs> access to the running wheel. Whereas in the experiment, it was hypothesized that uh, increase, in, uh, the increase of, of real activity would, uh, or would, would possibly correlate to human restless leg syndrome, motor symptoms, I should say, uh, which is categorized as the coronary movements. Uh, the time interval mm -hmm. corresponding the best to this was during the evening where the final phase of the dark phase occurred before the resting period. Also, note that uh, <coughs> in, in the voluntary real movement, uh, they measured the mice restlessness. Uh, whereas mice are awake in the dark, their day, note that their day is all night. Uh, okay, on the left is the wild type, on the right is the D3R, not on mice. The Y axis is the number of runs, and on the X axis is the time of the day in hours. Uh, the asterisk, I mean, okay, uh, the gray area, as you can see, the gray boxes, is the dark phase in, in the 12 hour period from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, the significance. <coughs> Uh, of the asterisk shows the, the, the movement of the mice before the resting period. Before, yeah, before the resting period. Where the iron deficient mice move more than the controlled mice in the wild type. <coughs> and in the D3R, where the asterisks are, the iron deficient mice move more than the controlled type, which is significant in the experiment. Uh, as you can see, all through the graph, there are changes in circadian patterns due to locomotor activities. Okay, the aim was to acquire further interaction <coughs> to two influences, which was the locomotor activity and the acute pain response. Well, one, the increased wheel usage before resting evoked the iron deficiency, which resembled RLS motor symptoms, and two, the iron deficiency resulted in the sensitization uh, of two acute or resistant pain before I mean to resemble RLS sensory symptoms. Okay, our uh, acute pain response, they use a hot plate test, which was used to investigate the differences <coughs> to acute and I mean, two acute pain responses to thermal stimuli. Uh, the mice were na naive to heat stimulus, which where it was placed on a 50 degree, 50 degrees Celsius hot plate, and they recorded the reaction in seconds until the first signs of of pain, of acute pain, occur, which was they let their hind legs, which the signs were. They make their hind leg, their hind paws, and try to escape the hot plate. <coughs> All right, uh, uh, in this graph, it shows the acute pain. In the wild type, um, the controlled mice move 12, about 12 seconds, with, as, in, as the iron deficient mice move 10 seconds. Whereas in the D3R, knock on mice, the control move eight seconds 
where the iron deficient mice moved. Some, some seconds. As you can see, the iron deficient and the D3 uh, mice move at a faster react reaction time than the wild type mice. Saying this, the iron, the iron deficient mice had altered circadian patterns towards the running medium, whereas the iron deficient knockout mice and, and the combine of iron deficient and, iron and D3 receptor knockout mice have shown this activity in an early point in time. Uh, they also showed less pain tolerance and they also showed more moving towards the resting period. The results confirm the ability of the iron deficient and the D3 knockout mice to, uh, to evoke a motor and sensory symptoms that was uh, which also resemble RLS uh, symptoms. All right, uh, the point of the experiment was to show that dopamine and iron are related to reducing RLS symptoms. Okay, my idea and hypothesis was if uh, micronutrients can be used, which can either inhibit and improve iron absorption, since in the RLS in the sense in the treatment of RLS, uh, with the use of iron supplements, it has shown the intended results from the previous experiment. So then combining iron with other micronutrients could affect this, could affect RLS symptoms. Okay, uh, there are four micronutrients of interest, which are phytate salts, vitamin C, selenium, and copper. All right, uh, I'll I think select my image. Okay, so this is the structure of the phytate cells. Uh, phytate cells are well-established inhibitors of iron absorption. <coughs> Whereas they can be found in lake worms and nuts. And they also can be bind with dietary iron, which slows the absorption. In a study conducted by Halsberg et al. in videos containing various amounts of the phytate cells, that was served to human volunteers. There was also iron tag with radio, radio isotopes and the rate of, of, of absorption was tracked in the subjects. Through the experiment, it was seen that, that the binding of iron with the phytic salts slows the body process, the, bo the body process of iron, which affects the synthesis of neurotransmitters, particularly dopamine. Okay, uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C counteracts the counteracts the effects of the phytate salts. Um, it's also known as ascorbic acid, which enhances the solubility of of uh, iron absorption. Um, uh, dietary vitamin C also mobilizes low iron stores, which prevents iron deficiency and And, uh, and the red blood cell count is generated with larger stores. I mean, red, the red blood, blood, blood cell count generates large, larger stores of iron. In the presence of vitamin C, which prevents iron deficiency, this promotes the increase of absorption of iron and also increase iron levels. Therefore, iron, I mean, vitamin C can be used in patients intake and dietary intake uh, to reduce symptoms of RLS. All right, so then selenium. Selenium is a trace element. It could be used in RLS treatment because of its role of moderating <coughs> iron metabolism. Today, selenium has not been explored in RLS. In a study conducted by Christine et al, Four morassals fair selenium deficient diets, transferring mRNA was higher in the rat's liver by 30% than rats that were only selenium, <coughs> that were fair selenium adequate diets. Transferring is a glycoprotein and involved in iron metabolism, which prevents the formation of free iron, iron of free iron molecules. And it's, and it's circulated in a form that is soluble and non-toxic. 
but in form of soluble non-toxic in order to bind to iron molecules. So saying this to me, could enhance the absorption of iron. Okay, <coughs> copper. Copper is being known to increase increase the absorption of iron. <coughs> Uh, due to the fact that copper acts as a cofactor to assist in the transportation of iron to different tissues. It also promotes in the creation of iron sulfur bonds, <coughs> which is in normal quantities, hmm, and, aiding, and aiding the body overall process of utilizing the iron. Low levels of <coughs> copper in the bloodstream may contribute to disease to a disease such as RLS due to the decrease of transportation to the tissues and muscles of the body. Uh, conclusion from the information explored that impact of select micro the impact of select micronutrients has been identified. Whereas the increasing levels of copper of selenium and vitamin C in the bloodstream has caused an increase in iron absorption <coughs> itself. Whereas in, in the fight day cells, this has shown a decrease in iron absorption. These micronutrients could potentially be used, could potentially be used in conjunction with iron in order to increase iron absorption, which will which will relieve symptoms of dopamine related disorders. Um, okay. between the sex of the person and whether or not they have restless leg syndrome? Is it more prevalent in men or women? Uh, reading the study, I don't see no difference. Okay. Um, where are people that have restless leg syndrome more likely to get Parkinson's disease later? Uh, I don't think so once they're uh, in therapy. I don't think that would occur. Uh, getting treated with little dopa, an augmentation of that. So, uh. Let me piggyback upon Dr. Fitz's first question. Which one of the two would you, based upon your your talk here, would uh, which one of the sexes would you expect to be more likely to experience this problem? Uh, if you were, if you were, you know, forming that hypothesis, um, I would think it'd be in, in women with anemia, okay, because uh, possibly they could have loss of iron, okay, due to menstruation, okay, like and then uh, with male, I mean, doing sports, it depends on their dietary intake, supplements. A second question: the phytates. Uh, now, was I reading that right, that that's normally found in things like nuts and legumes? Yeah. Does that mean that that a person would be doing well to avoid those foods? Uh, no. I, I don't think it's that high, but I mean, if it's syn synthetic, as in mid, I think that's, I think the levels in those nuts is not really high, but only in synthetic stuff, like... Uh, creating a lab to well, produce that because I think they use uh, phytate cells are normally called phytin cells. Uh, I think it's normally used in, in uh, things related to uh, experiments. Um, <coughs> um, I walk my thought. When you were talking about uh, restless, leg, restless leg syndrome and it being a neurological problem, so 
granted there is no really long lasting damage if your neurons are firing too much dopamine, can we just simply solve this problem by popping a few ibuprofen and these people just go to sleep very well, be numb to the pain, or does painkillers not, the painkillers not work at all? Um, I mean, I think I mean, it depends on the production of dopamine because dopamine can, uh, uh, helps control the muscle, and co helps control the movement right. uh, in the brain. So, I, mean, I, so I think like it will only be temporary. So people with restless leg syndrome have this in terms of long term, like every single evening they have this. Yeah. Because they're coming in now, right? Yeah. So, it sounds to me like it's, it's almost like a good problem to have. People with dopamine firing properly usually are, are happy people. We know we need high levels of dopamine for us to be in, encouraged and motivated and stuff and not be, be depressed. Isn't that the, the chemical in the brain that makes you happy? So if, if, if it's high firing, so these are happy people with a leg problem. Yeah, I mean, later that uh, serotonin is more we want to move. How is that? Dopamine, how is serotonin different than dopamine? I mean, serotonin is related to, to mood, uh -huh. to moods and behavior, as well as then uh, dopamine is more related to the motor function. Okay. Um, uh, serotonin is more of the happy, the happy neurotransmitter.